Hey folks, Adam Dupay here, and today I'm going to be doing a live hack through of the Punables.kr level Shell Shock. So let's dive right in. So the title should be an immediate giveaway. Uh, if you don't know what Shell Shock is, I highly recommend you go read up on this vulnerability in Bash. It is super interesting, and so I'm actually really excited that we'll be able to, uh, hopefully this challenge will have something to do with that. So let's read this. It says, Mommy, there was a shocking news about Bash. That's true. I bet you already know, but let's just make sure. And this actually uh, really ties in with my hacking philosophy. So I truly believe that if you really want to learn how to break something, um, you need to not only be able to understand the theory and understand how stacks works, how uh, string copy works, how everything actually works, because fundamentally, at the end of the day, hacking is all about knowledge and using your knowledge to control a program and force it to do something that it wasn't intended to do. But uh, the other thing is the knowledge is not the only thing. You need to actually put fingers to keyboard and actually be able to hack and exploit these things. Um, so let's dive right into this one. So here we are. Um, so we're, we have the shell shock binary again. So this is one which has a set group ID um, on shell shock pwn, which has the same permissions as the flag. The interesting thing here is there's a bash in this directory. So we have shell shock and shell shock dot C. So let's jump in and see what this code's all about. Perfect, so uh, this actually makes sense. So what it's doing, so it's calling set uh, uh, effective UID based on the get effective group ID. Uh, wait, what? Group ID, group ID. Okay, so it's setting your IDs to your group. So it's basically um, turning us into the Shellshock Pwn user, uh, which is the group that we're executing as, yeah. Um, so this is what this is doing. Uh, you should definitely read up on these man pages if you don't understand what this is doing, but this is basically uh, set UID gives us an effective user ID and this is changing our actual user ID to this. And it's calling system uh, home shell shock bash dot s echo shock me. So if we do shell shock, we'll see shock me. Um, if we run file on bash, so now what we can do is a few things. So uh, what I know off the top of my head about the shell shock vulnerability is what bash would do is if an environment variable was set, then uh, so what bash would do is it would go through all of the environment variables that are stored in the local environment. And if there's anything that looks like a function definition, it would actually execute that function. Uh, so rather than actually look at what a bash um, what a shell shock exploit looks like and then use that to do what I want to do here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to challenge myself to see if I can do this just based off of what I know about shell shock. Um, so it, well, maybe I could do man bash and look for, basically I want to know what does a function look like uh, in bash. And so shell function definitions. A shell function is an object that's called like a simple command and executes a compound command with a set of new positional parameters. Shell functions are declared as follows. Um, see, ah, there's a functions below. So that sounds interesting. That's definitely where I wanna be. Okay, so it stores um, identical to a function, the debug type. So the problem is, if I remember correctly, so um, so how do we pass? So one thing we can try to do is, um, and looking at the uh, shell shock code, right? So we can't actually control this parameter that gets passed in here. Um, so it's calling home shell shock bash dot C. So we don't control anything in here. We know it's just calling um, that. So, but what we can do is we can change maybe the path if we wanted to do that. Uh, and this is how, so any arguments you put here, this is going to be um, passed as environment variables. So for instance, um, and the way to kind of test this for yourself, if you've never played around with this, you can use env to look at and output all of the current variables. So if we say uh, foo equals equals bar and then run env, we'll see foo equals bar in the environment. 
so this means I need to build up some kind of atom equals uh, some kind of payload and then call this shell shock. Um, the problem is now, so I already tried to challenge myself to look through it for here. Um, variables local to the function, any built-in variables, function names. Uh, the problem is I don't know the exact syntax, so um, I, I'm trying to see if there's a way to store a um, a command here um, to to figure out what's the syntax for storing a function. But let's see. Okay, aliases allow you to do various things. Um, ta -ta -ta -ta. Command execution, environment. Hmm. Let's see. Oops. This is from 2004, so 14, so that's the one this came out. So this must be, definitely must be a, so if I do bash version, it'll tell me it's 2.4.2. And if I just did bash, it would tell me that this is a non-vulnerable version. Okay, great. So, all right, that's not very useful. So uh, let's look at, how to store a function in bash. And what this was done is this was done in order to um, saving bash functions. There we go. I think this is what we want. Mm -hmm. No. Um. So this was used if you wanted to pass, if you wanted to invoke bash or another process and pass a function. Um, so you know what, let's just, so maybe you can take a second um, and try to figure this out on your own, but I want to get this done with. So uh, shell shock software bug. So this was in 2014, so this time frame is perfect. It was uh, one of the first uh, to use uh, this kind of Thing. Okay, so function definitions, uh, environment variables. Yes, this is exactly what we want. So I wonder if they'll have an exploit here. Um, and this was super dangerous because, ah, there we go. Ah, see, it did have something like this. Okay, so here's our function definition. And then um, Adam is gonna, we're gonna set equal to this. And anything we do after here is going to be after this semicolon. So we just should be able to do cap flag, shell shock. There we go. So that was a success. Man, that was super easy. Um, and so this was super uh, important because anything that allowed you to like uh, for GitHub, when you check out a Git repo, you're actually SSHing into that machine. And so um, you could use, the, so the environment variable SSH original command, you could set when you SSH'd in. Um, web servers that use CGI, so CGI creates environment variables. Um, so this was super dangerous. There's a tons of different exploitation vectors here. So here we go. We can copy this in and we can get our flag. All right, so this is actually uh, a great, I love challenges like this that actually uh, force you to look at and understand different types of real world vulnerabilities. And the crazy thing about Shellshock when you research this and look into this is this was around for 20 plus years. So uh, this vulnerability has just remained latent in software. So that kind of helps make you think, well, what about other vulnerabilities and other types of software that I use all the time? So. All right, thanks everyone, and I will see you next time.